I'm very, very honored to be here and because there are so many uh, competent people and there's so much, much experience in this room and in this conference. And um, so I especially, I feel like a newcomer in this uh, field. And uh, I met with Michael uh, Goethe, who is a uh, no very old friend of mine from Spain when we lived there together. Uh, not us together, but we were friends. <laughs> And uh, we met at tough leadership training, and we started to, to talk about this and what we're doing in Svenska Retursystem. So that's uh, actually the reason why I'm here today. So can you imagine uh, waking up one morning and realizing that everything that you have been promoted for, everything that you feel comfortable with, and all of your strengths, they are suddenly your biggest pitfalls, your worst enemies. Ah, oh, it's scary. And that's really what happened to me one day, and um, I realized I had to do something about it. Uh, and it was uh, really like an enlightening. Because we are working towards getting a full commitment, full engagement of everyone, each and every one in our company to really feel truly engaged in everything they do. And we're on a cultural change. And I've been working with change programs for all of my life. So I thought that I, uh, I was actually able to do this. But I realized that it was all about doing change within myself. And that's hard. But I want to ask you a question. How many of you feel truly engaged when you go to work? Ah, we have a lot of engaged people here today. That's good. Some of you don't. Some of you are. And according to Gallup, only 13% of all employees are truly engaged. And that is uh, the number worldwide, globally. And actually in Sweden, we are a little bit better. 16% are engaged. And I know that because I was meeting with the um, uh, with the board of uh, Post and Norge the other day, and, and then I just looked up the figure uh, for Norway, and they are even more engaged than we are in Sweden. But this is a huge waste of resources, and I would say this is the main problem, that we actually go to work and we're not engaged. And it's a huge waste of resources, both for the company and for ourselves. So I just wonder, why did we end up here? Because this is not what we want. And uh, I can only speak for myself. As a manager, I have a lot of drive. I really like to take decisions. It's really part of my job. It's part of my, my identity. And um, I also like to organize people. I have fantastic ideas of how we should organize things in order for everything to end up in the best way. And uh, I also, during my entire career, have thought that I am very good at involving people and getting everyone on board and so on. And, but what I realized that morning was that uh, my coworkers I don't really communicate in a way that my coworkers felt truly involved. And um, I think it's, it's part of this, that by default, as a manager, we are responsible. And we take decisions instead of just leaving the problem and the decisions with whoever is best to, to take the decision and have the right competence. And by default, we follow up, we control, instead of 
trusting all the time, trusting and relating to the capacity within the people. And we drive our own agendas. I know what's the problem, I have a good solution, I, I've been trained to, to fix the solutions all my life, instead of really, truly listening to the people and what they have to say. So what's the solution? Well, I, as a leader, I need, I really have to be brave, because this is about being brave. And actually get out of the way, which is kind of absurd, because I'm there to take responsibility, I'm there to, to, to lead the way. But no, if I want to change, I need to get out of the way. Uh, if I truly believe that moving from the traditional way of working, where, there, where a few people make the decisions and, and the rest have to implement towards uh, of an organization or a way of working together where everyone is involved and we really take care of everyone's competence and engagement. And I truly believe that in order to get more engagement in our business, society, business community, we really need to, uh, to engage everyone. Everyone has to feel truly included and contribute with every thing, all the competence that is he or she has. And um, uh, this is kind of hard, especially if you have my background, because I've been working in traditional, large, hierarchical companies all of my life. I started in Statoil, and I was really glad to hear the story of the transformation within Statoil. I, I worked there for 15 years. And, um, uh, I've had several positions. I was a vice president supply chain at Lant Menon, and uh, I had uh, the task of uh, implementing a lean-based transformation program throughout the entire, uh, the entire company. And uh, we were pretty successful, um, but uh, we didn't manage to really engage all the middle management, the middle management they felt not included and so on. And, and, and that's really, it's, it's hard to, to, to include everyone. So five years ago, I became the CEO of Svenska Retursystem, which is um, a fairly young company. We're now 20 years. Uh, we've been in the circular economy uh, for 20 years. And uh, we're only 150 people. And my, uh, the former CEO, he was very, very traditional. He was silo, organized, no cooperation, cross-functional cooperation. He took all the decisions. So that was actually the culture that I got to. And I wanted to start this process to go to continuous improvements and lean-based uh, management and so on. And it's been a long journey. And this is really the theme of my entire career, because I've been working since the, the 90s with quality assurance. We talked about total quality management, Six Sigma, Kaizen, you know all of this. And I would say Agile is just a new way of all of this. Because to really succeed in all of these change management or change programs or models or working methods, you need to relate to all the people and you need to get all the people on board and really make use of all the competence and all the uh, experience that you have in the organization. And um, so, so really, Agile is nothing new, but it's, um, it's really putting things um, to a more um, distinct uh, way of addressing the mental and the cultural and, and the climate within the company that you need to work on. You need to, first of all, improve the climate. And this is me. We have worked with something called Enneagram. I don't know if you know about it, what it is. Uh, but it's a nine, nine different personality types. And I'm the number eight, the challenger. So that brings also a lot of challenge to me. Because by, by default, 
I, I'm powerful, I like to, it's easy for me to take decisions, uh, like to be in charge. And you know, in, in doing and trying to, to get this change, it's, it's really becomes my, my pitfall. And uh, I'm, I have a very big fear of being controlled by others. So I can really relate to people that, well, you don't want to be controlled. And yet, uh, I think I have to be in control. So this is, this is kind of weird. Um, so with all of this, uh, really, from my, my working experience in a lot of hierarchies, uh, having the personality type, it was really hard to realize that what I, the, the most important thing that I had to do for us to really move forward on our journey towards more agile, more flat organization, had to do with myself. I really needed to change. And I really needed to change in my behavior towards uh, everyone in the company. So we have some um, basic key learnings from, from our, and I would say, ongoing journey towards total engagement. We're in, right now, in the really messy middle. I think some of uh, the people in the organization, this is chaotic. Uh, she's crazy, our CEO is crazy, she doesn't, uh, she's not in control. Um, but actually, it has released a lot of power in the organization. And all of our uh, performances is going the right way. It's really moving in the right, decision, right direction. So I feel very comfortable that what we are doing is the right thing. But it's hard. And it's not sort of any harmony. But I don't think that you, you have worked with this. You know that it's not uh, harmony. Uh, and that's why it's so important to start with the cultural change, to start with the climate and address what's really going on under the surface. What, what, what's, not uns what's not spoken out? Uh, what are the conflicts? And, and really get all the problems up on the table. And that's what we've been doing uh, for, for the last uh, one and a half year. And we've solved a lot of issues. But of course, for, for the people working in our organization, it's really tough when suddenly all of us see all the problems. So it's not uh, very strange that you, you come to this point with a messy middle. But of course, you need structure as well. But uh, it's not a question about having managers or not having managers. It's really a question of creating the right climate and creating uh, and having uh, relate to each other in, in, a, in a good way and have a good culture of giving each other feedback. And then for me, of course, to give away the power and to actually do less. Um, which is really, for me, it's very good because I have a lot of more time over. I'm not in as many meetings as I used to be. Um, I have the time to be here today. That's really nice. Uh, but also to have patience. This is not a quick fix. We will not be through the messy middle in, in quite a while. And we have to have a perspective of several years. Right now, uh, there are the th three teams who have chosen not to have managers. It's their choice. Uh, the rest of the, the, the organization have managers. Um, so we're not really, we don't really know when will things happen, will they happen, and so on. It's up to, very much up to the organizations. But I truly believe that this is the right way uh, because I see so many positive things happening. I see so many people stepping ahead and starting to take decision, take responsibility, and, and they do great things. Great things happen. Um, 
and actually, it's not only me who, who have to be brave. Uh, all of the people in the organization need to be brave. And then we're working a lot on the transparency, really giving everyone access to all information. Uh, and to create the right channels. Right now, we have two-thirds of our staff uh, is, uh, is uh, blue color. And now we are actually giving everyone access to Teams, uh, which is uh, they haven't had any email ad address before. So there are a lot of things that need to, to be in place in order to facilitate uh, the sharing of all the information. Because if you don't have the right information, it's not possible to take the right decisions. So, I see a lot of positive signs. Uh, last week, we uh, were actually certified according to Great Place to Work, uh, which has been a goal for us, a step towards our vision of being uh, one of the best workplaces in Sweden. We're a truly sustainable company, and what we do is sustainable. And I think uh, moving towards uh, agile management or agile working ways or so on uh, is also a sustainability issue. I think we touched upon it uh, earlier today, uh, but it, it, we can't solve the sustainability issues in the world unless we move in this direction. That's something I, I truly believe. So, I will just show you a short video on what we do towards our vision on a sustainable future. And let's see if this works. Systemet som förbättrar din affär, om och om igen. Du känner igen oss på våra lådor och pallar, men vi är mer än så. Vi är ett retursystem som effektiviserar och miljöanpassar den svenska dagligvaruhandeln. Tillsammans säkerställer vi att varorna kommer fram hela och fräscha. Alla medverkande bidrar till ett effektivt system. Här är några exempel på hur det fungerar. Det är en enkel låda, den väger inte så mycket, den är lätt att packa i och den är lätt att skicka iväg. Vi försöker ju då få så många artiklar som möjligt att passa i den här SRS-lådan. Även transportmässigt har vi en fördel. Vi kan ju dubbelställa de här pallarna som gör att vi får plats med mycket på golvytan direkt och inte behöver bomma lastbilar. Pallarna håller en god kvalitet. Behöver inte rejekteras på lager. Vi slipper då fliser i bansystemet och göra rent då, som vi får göra med träpallar. Fördelarna med modulanpassade lådor är att dels underlättar det transportoptimeringen när vi på ICA då plockar varorna i våra rullburar och även på pallar ute i butik. De här lådorna som vi hanterar i våra automationslager är också av sån god kvalitet så att vi får inte några kvalitetsbrister med förpackningar som går sönder och de fungerar alldeles utmärkt att hantera i våra automationslager. Det är ergonomiskt. De är väldigt bra hanterbara för personalen eftersom de är ganska små och går att ta tag i. Lådorna passar så bra i varandra och tar egentligen ingen plats. Så kan man använda samma bur som man har att plocka på. Då. När det gäller exponeringar så har vi till exempel på färsken så lägger man ju, ställer man ut en hel låda med till exempel bacon. Så använder man ju själva lådan som en exponering. Då. Och det är enkelt och effektivt. Det miljömässiga som är bra det är att den går att använda igen och igen och igen som den sätta. We're not so known, so I just wanted to show you what we do because uh, not many people know know that. But if we don't serve the entire food industry with a half million crates every day, it will stop. So it takes all the engagement from the entire staff uh, to really deliver this and and we do this with a lot of passion and with our hearts believing in the sustainable future thank you very much